Hey you guys, it's Brandy with Eternal Harvest Home Decor and today I'm here to show you how I turned this into this. We all know that lumber prices are out of this world right now, which is why I have resorted to creating some Ikea hacks for my house so that I can afford to build things for me. I build things for customers where I use hardwoods, but the things for myself, I try to be very budget friendly. I'm just not rolling in dough. I don't have a money tree. But I found out that these Ivar cabinets were pretty budget friendly and they had three different styles. They have a three door, drawer style, a 12 inch deep cabinet and a 20 inch deep cabinet. So I'm gonna show you how I grabbed all three of these after they got back in stock at Ikea, put them together to create this awesome desk space for my daughter. We've got a little desk here that I built in another house for another space and it doesn't quite work here. I want to add some storage, some cabinets there, and then a desk, and then put in some really cool floating shelves along here. What do you think, Sia? Look how tall they are. They're pretty big. So three of those stacked. What? I can reach the top one. Not this part. Just this cabinet, and that's it. I think I like it. So the first thing we did was we grabbed Ikea cabinets from Ikea. We grabbed the drawer version, the 24 inch deep version, and the 12 inch deep version. So one of each of the designs of the Ivar cabinetry. My six year old really wanted to be a part of this process and Ikea furniture is perfect for that. They come with all the tools necessary mostly and they make it pretty simple. So if she can do it, anybody can do it, right? <laughs> um, so we put them all together to begin with and I put them in place just to see what I was really dealing with, how it looked, how it took over the space, etc. And these are a little time consuming to put together but they're made with real wood and they're not too bad. Once I got these all assembled, I stood them up to get an idea of how it looked and I realized really quickly that I wanted them to have a base or some feet. So I grabbed some two by twos from Lowe's and some one by threes from Lowe's to create the base. Um, the two by twos will become the feet and the one by threes would become the base sides and back. So I'm gonna cut up some here and lay them all out to assemble. I'll go ahead and make sure to include all the measurements down below in the description. I am using a Craig Jig pocket hole jig to assemble this entire thing together. I suggest you get one if you plan on doing DIY projects. And if you're curious about how it works, check out this video that I made previously on how to use a Craig Jig. Now, once I had my pocket holes drilled in the sides of the apron, I could attach them to the legs or the two by twos for the feet. So I like to lay my legs on either side of the cross pieces, add Titan glue to the ends, and then I'm using one and a half inch pocket hole screws. This will make the front and the back pieces of the leg. And then I'll be adding sides to connect them all together right here. I'm adding glue, one and a half inch screws again, and these are actually two by three because that's what I have on hand, but you can use one by and there you have a base. And I quickly went in and put that onto the bottom side of the cabinet, screwed it in with one and a half inch pocket screws, and I decided to paint this first before flipping it over to make it easier for myself towards the end. I wouldn't have to paint down low. So this is kind of a homework corner. We homeschool our kids and we need space for computers and things. I had this one by 16 by four foot piece of pine. I decided to make some little computer cubbies. So I'm cutting three pieces at five inches thick and putting pocket holes in the bottom of each of those pieces. And then I'll attach that to the top of the cabinet and lay the remaining across the top to create a little cubby. I'm attaching these with one and a half inch pocket screws just right into the top of the cabinet and then I glued and nailed the top onto those pieces. Then I set the 12 inch cabinet on top and reattached the doors. So here you can see it's standing up higher off the floor with the legs and I also wanted to make sure because it's so high that it was secure to the wall. So I found the studs with a stud finder and I put a screw through the back side of the cabinet to hold it against the wall. 
Now if your cabinets just have a cardboard backing, you're going to want to use a scrap piece of lumber to screw into the stud and then you can nail through to the top into that block to hold it secure. This is the part of this project that really makes it stand out and makes it unique. I am using this paintable wallpaper that I found at Lowe's. It was super affordable. I think it's like 18 bucks a roll. And I used it on the back of one of my barn doors and had some left over and thought, oh, this would be perfect. So I'm attaching it to all the faces of the drawers and the doors, and then I will paint it all one color. I'd like to note really quickly all the mess in my house. All of this stuff is gonna need to go inside this cabinet. It's all waiting to be relocated to a new home. It's crazy. Okay, so I've got this all connected and put together. These are secured into studs in both places. So now I'm gonna move on to the drawer panel. I need to put the correct legs on the bottom here and take apart this desk so I can start attaching it all together and making it look like one big piece right here. This is not gonna be this wide. You'll see, just trust me. Then I'm gonna put on the wallpaper facing to the fronts of the doors. So here I'm moving on to put the exact same feet or base on the drawer panel. I'm taking all the drawers out and flipping it over. I had toyed with this other base and I didn't like it. So instead I'm attaching this the same way, one and a half inch screws. I'll paint the base first so that I don't have to paint it when it's upright close to the floor, worry about taping things off and it'll be ready to go. I am adding these little foam pads to the base just to help protect the floor in case I need to move it. Now the wallpaper comes with adhesive on the back, so I'm lightly spraying with this water bottle and attaching it, just rubbing it onto the back. Okay, so here's the paintable wallpaper and it already has the paste on the back. And so I'm using this spray bottle. I'm going to spray the back. I really don't want it too wet, so I'm not going to soak it in water, but I'm going to spray the back and let it sit for a minute and then flip it over and it should stick to the wood, no problem. So the wallpaper just needs to be wet enough that that paste starts to become really tacky. And then you can push it in with your hands or if you have a wallpaper utility knife, you can scrape the bubbles out, make sure it's laying nice and flat. Give it some time to dry and it's ready for painting. I'm not painting the entire door because I will be adding trim. So I'll just be painting the wallpaper portion and letting that dry before I add the MDF trim. To add the trim, I'll be using this pin nailer by Ryobi. This is a 23 gauge nail. It's really tiny, leaves a really small hole that doesn't really need to be filled. The paint just kind of fills it in. So this is a great pin nailer. If you haven't used a pin nailer before, I do have a video on brad nailers and pin nailers. You can check that out right here. And I'll be putting glue on the back side of these MDF strips. They were just cut to the exact length of the door. And then I nail it in with the pin nailer at the top and at the bottom to hold it in place and give it a nail in the middle until the glue dries. And I do this with every single piece of trim. I'm adding two pieces to all the sides because one, I feel like it gives it a really cool look and style. And number two, I was totally out of the thicker trim and I needed to cover all the way <laughs> the door all the way to where the wallpaper shows. So I'm just using two pieces of molding and painting them all the same color. Now, right now I'm just doing the side that will actually attach to the cabinet and I'll show you why in just a second. So here I'm attaching the doors onto the cabinets and they will have just the molding on the back side there. And that is because on these cabinets, there's a bit of a gap between the doors so that Ikea can make it easy and I would like to close that gap. Here, I'll explain better in this other clip. One of the things that happens with these Ikea Ivar cabinets is that they offer this really big gap to help you when you're attaching your doors so that you don't have to adjust a ton and it drives me bonkers. So what I'm gonna do is what I did up here. I'm adding the trim on, but I'm adding the trim closer together to kind of close that gap because I don't like the way that it looks. So when I put the trim on, I'm gonna start with this outer edge to try and close that gap to about an eighth of an inch. Um, and then I'll put the second piece on top and the bottom.
Here I decided to add a little molding or trim around the computer cubbies because I wanted to make it look a little more custom and I think it helped a lot. Now it's time to start on the drawer cabinet and this is very similar to the other side. I put the drawers in and I put wallpaper across the front and then I'm just gonna add the MDF molding around the outside of the wallpaper and paint it to match. I got this little pink level from WorkPro and it helps a lot when you're adding trim. This will help you to put it on top of the molding or the trim, make sure you're level and then you can use the pin nailer to nail the trim in place. And the very last big step is to take this spider hole saw and drill a little hole in the side of the cabinet. I love these because you can get the wood chunks out super easy. This hole will be for the wires for the computer. So I'll house the CPU inside the cabinet and the monitor up top and try to control the wire system underneath. I don't like the unsightly wires. So hopefully this will hide them a little bit. And then I just paint everything to match so that it looks like one custom piece. Sometimes it helps to add trim between the cabinet piece and the wall to make it look a little more built in, but this is totally optional. I happen to have a piece in the garage. I will go ahead and link the poles that I used on the cabinets. That really gave them a final touch. I really love the look. And that's it. It's done. I have to give a shout out to this beautiful rug that I got from Boutique Rugs. It's the Hillcrest rug, and I feel like it really finishes off the space. This chair doesn't quite go, so I'm in the process of waiting for the new chair to arrive from Amazon, but this Boutique Rugs is perfect. I'll make sure and add my code BRANDY60 below in the description, which will give you 60% off at Boutique Rugs. It is an affiliate link, but man, it really helps. And it gives you guys a significant price difference, which makes it a very budget-friendly rug. I've been really impressed by the quality and the options. Okay, if you made it to the end of this video, I wanna say thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can see all the rest of the content that I have planned for the year. All of it is woodworking, DIY-friendly projects that I'm doing in my home, and I'm taking you along with me to show you how it's done. Hopefully, what I learn along the way will help you as well. So thank you, subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok. And if you have any questions, you can send them over that way. I try to respond to everything. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.